this step, we're going to discuss the basic setup for our high low game. All right, so we have already set up several of the components in the design view. So we'll go over them rather than watching me drag them around and set all the settings. All right, so we have our list over here. Let's start at the top screen. We've assigned a portrait screen orientation because it makes sense for our game to look like that. And we've turned off the status bar and the title and we can name our app high low. All right. So the goal of this game is to generate a random number and then have the user, the player, guess whether the next number will be either lower or higher. Okay, so our number label is simply where our random number will be displayed. We've gone and made it bold, 100 font size. We've set the height to automatic so it adjusts with the font size, but we want to fill the width of the screen. Okay, and we initialize it to zero in the designer, but we actually set it in the screen initializer uh, event. Okay and then it's black uh, text. All right, the instructions, the first set, each random number is from one to 100. That simply describes the possible random numbers in order to allow someone to guess lower or higher. They kind of need to know that information. Our second label is instructions two, essentially, and it's the question, will, the next number be higher or lower. So both sets of instructions are labels and they're italicized just kind of to set them out of uh, context from the bold or the buttons. Right? 18 font, right? And so, and then we just set automatic height again because we want the height to adjust with the font size and we fill the entire width of the screen. And in this case, we center the text as well because it looks nice that way. All right, so we have two sets of instructions. Each random number is from 1 to 100. And will the question, will the next number be higher or lower? All right, so those are our basic labels up top. And then we have our choices. So this is actually a horizontal alignment. So we can find out this under layout, horizontal arrangement. Sorry. And then we drag that on there, and then we put the buttons inside the horizontal arrangement. Okay, so we have two buttons, but we also have a couple spacers, because we want the buttons to look nice. So we have labels that are spacers. So first we drag a spacer one uh, that is 14 font size, which was the default for when I dragged it. And we set the width to 1%. Right, so 1% of the screen. So each of these spacers will have the same settings. And then we drag our button. Right, this is choose lower button. And we renamed it. We made it bold, font size 18 to look nice. And we just simply say fill the parent on both the height and the width. And to make it even nicer, we make the shape rounded. Okay and center the text inside the button. Then we added another spacer, same properties as before. Then we added the higher button, same properties as the lower. All right, 18 font, fill the parent, rounded shape. And finally, a spacer on the end to get this nice separated layout with our buttons, okay? And so that was all the items in our horizontal arrangement. Then we have a spacer four, right? So that's another label, or rather, this is actually a horizontal arrangement spacer. Sorry. Um, so we dragged the horizontal arrangement. It's got nothing in it. So we just simply set the height to 1% and we want to fill the parent. So we want it to go all the way edge to edge and we want to consume 1% of the height to 
kind of space these buttons from this button down here. Okay. So this next part, this button, make your choice, will be essentially a go button, right? Once we have our choice, this text will change to go, and then we will be able to click it, tap it on our screen, and it'll go through, generate a random number, and say whether these won or lost, or guessed correctly. So our go button, our font size is 30, uh, we fill the parent with the height, and we make the width 97%, so it doesn't consume the entire screen edge to edge, um, so it looks a little bit more shaped, right? And we set the shape to oval just to differentiate it from the lower and higher. And we set the initial text to make your choice. And so every time they make their choice, this button will change its text to go. And then once we click it, it'll change back to make your choice. And we center the text. Okay. So the game details is this bottom horizontal arrangement. And it simply has a few labels. Right? So we have a win-lose label that represents whether we guessed correctly or not. And then we have a streak label. And then we have a streak number label. Right? So the streak number is what gets updated when we guess correctly, right? So we're on a hot streak if we guess over and over and over again. We can ignore these files that I left, right? Right, so those are the basic components, and then part of a random needs a clock. So we find the clock under it. Where is it? Media? No. Sensors. So under sensors, there's a clock. It becomes a non-visible component. We're not actually timing anything or running the clock. It just uses a procedure that we need uh, to help generate random numbers. Right, so if we that's our design view. These are our components. You can set them up. Uh, pause the video as you set them up uh, in your project. And we're going to give you some of the basic blocks to set up this project. And then you will go through and do the go button logic. So the other buttons are written for you and an example of generating the random number. So if we go to our blocks, we've seen we have several blocks already created for you, right? So our variable is created called random number. We initialize it to zero, but we're actually going to set it in our initialize event. And then we have another variable, higher chosen, that is set to false to begin with, right? So this just represents whether the higher button was clicked or the lower button was clicked. So in the higher case, it will be set to true. In the lower case, it'll be set to false. Right? So then we can go through our initialize screen one, which gets called when the app is launched. So first we set our random seed to clock system time. So that is under our math random set seed and our clock component. We will get system time in, right here. Okay, so that simply allows us to get different random numbers every time we launch the app, right? And so then we want to initialize our actual random number from one to one hundred, just like the instruction said. So we go to math, we get the random number, and we use our set variable block. And then we have a few settings for our labels and our buttons just to kind to make them uh, colored and so we can always set the colors back uh, properly. Right? So our colors are listed here. 
right? We use this gray one and this white one. And then we set the text of the number label, right? We saw the number label up here. We set that value to the initial random number. And if we see uh, our buttons, we notice that our go button is actually disabled, right? So we don't have the check for enabled, which means you can't tap it or click it when you start the app, which means we have to choose something first. So our lower and our higher are very similar in blocks. We set the button to green, right? In this case, the lower, in this case, the higher. And then we set the alternate button to gray. And we set the go button to gray, right? So it was white and now it will be gray, right? So when we click the go button, all of our buttons should go back to this state, right? Gray, gray, white, as well as our enabled should go back to disabled. Right? We shouldn't be able to click the button go until we make our second choice on the second time around. Right? And then we set our text from choose make your choice to go. Okay? And our enabled, see how we set enabled to true? So it will flip it to false after we click go. And then we say whether we chose the higher button or the lower button. So we set it to false in the lower situation, set it to true in the higher situation. Right? And so the general algorithm we want to use for this is we want to check our random number. And if we said higher and it is higher, then we need to update the game status label to say, you were correct or something like that and then if it was wrong we update the game status saying they were wrong also if they were correct we need to increment our streak counter right so we have our variable or rather our property right so our streak counter we can see right here so we can get this text property right here and we can set it and we can perform math on that as well okay, our math blocks allow us to add or subtract okay, we're not subtracting from our streak if we get it incorrect our streak becomes zero if we didn't we broke our streak okay so all of that will be out outlined in the algorithm in the lab specification 